I've been a big fan of Flylo's work up until this point. I think his work has been incredibly consistent. And he's put out some fantastic releases such as uh, L.A. and Cosmogramma. At this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that many people will consider Cosmogramma as his magnum opus, but even other albums such as You're Dead are pretty damn great as well. So of course, with me holding his work so highly, I was of course anticipating this new album from him. And on his last album, which was five years ago at this point, he did collaborate with a few artists, which isn't something that he, he usually does on his own material. And since then, he's collaborated with many, many other artists on their work, doing production credits and that kind of stuff. I think working on To Bimper Butterfly was one of his biggest moments of his career, and the success of that album really only proves the talent he has as well. So I think the progress from going into more collaborations on his own work was only going to usher in quite naturally and on this new album we do see way more collaborations than I think he's ever done on any of his work up till up until now. But unfortunately I, do, I don't think it's made Flamagra this big grand piece of music that I was hoping it to be unfortunately. This is a 27 track album with an hour and seven minutes in runtime, and my god does it feel that long at points. Lengthy album releases are not necessarily a problem for me. Two of my favourite albums of last year, in fact, were 90 plus minutes in length. But I think it really depends on the individual case where the album justifies that runtime. And a lot of this album just feels like filler or just empty noise at points. Now aside from the tracks that hit a guest feature, because the guest features have a very significant role on this album, there are like three, four track runs that just really fly by and don't really hit me in any particular way. I do think Flylo could have made use of these moments a lot more because uh, they really do just sound like leftovers of what he's done in the past. Yeah, it's a bit more jazzier and a bit funkier at points, uh, quite neo-soulful as well throughout. But I don't know, I, I just feel like I'm listening to stuff that he's done in the past and he's done it quite a lot better. Takashi just sounds like a You're Dead leftover and instead of like expanding on the sound or taking it into a really cool, unique uh, direction, it just kind of stays the same throughout. It doesn't really build into anything interesting. Same with tracks like you Remind You for me as well. Like a lot of these tracks are quite short and they're just like two minutes or even less than that. And there's just not enough time on these songs to like be taken into this really cool direction. It could be like really track like Remind You as well is very similar in the sense that it's just not doing anything that perks my ears up. I'm just kind of left in the cold, just waiting for something big to happen and nothing really ever does. It's quite nice on the ears for sure, but it's not really the most exhilarating jazz funk you could ever lay your ears on really. Now the track to track flow is incredibly impressive on this album. I must give Flylo praise for that because there's a huge diverse range of artists on here. Like, you're not getting the same types of artists on the features. You're getting a lot of different ones, and I think that's impressive to keep it quite tightly knit, despite the fact that you're having someone like a Little Dragon, Anderson Pack, Solange, David Lynn. His vocals do really work with his sound, though. It's definitely a collaboration that was needed, I think. The most impressive features for me uh, Denzel Curry. I think this reprise of Black Balloons is actually better than the original Black Balloons that made its way onto Taboo, honestly. The variety of production that Denzel can rap over is extraordinary, honestly. Like, he can rap over some rap metal, he can rap over some, like, trap, he, he can do anything at this point, and this is just another example of that. The Tierra Whack feature? I can't even explain it, man. She is just speaking so much shit, but it is so weird and odd that I end up loving it. She's almost on some Eminem revival type shit with some of the rhyming she does on that track, but honestly, that is how it's done. This is how you just say words that make no sense and it, it gets, she gets it right. I don't know how. One of the strangest tracks I think I've heard all year, and I absolutely appreciate it for what it is. Take away from Thundercats talents, but I'm just not really getting that much 
out of his feature. Little Dragon, the exact same thing, just doing what Little Dragon has always done. And there have been some amazing Little Dragon features over the years. I mean, that one with Subtract was fantastic. And also the Gorillas collaborations that Little Dragon did, but quite often Little Dragon just bores me, to be honest. Solange, honestly, again, similar reasons here. They're just doing what they usually do, and there's not really anything that Flylo is adding to these tracks that makes me feel like I'm hearing something I haven't heard before. And that's a shame because Philo is progressing with every album usually and making something so unique and different. And yet this is the first time where I just feel like I'm hearing more of the same. Even the Anderson Pack feature I'm just not really that impressed with. I am once the beat switches up, I really like that second half of the song. But the first section really kind of just doesn't really do much for me. And the Toro E. Moore feature I would say was actually really quite good as well. I like the the vocalizations he's doing on this one, especially considering the last album he put out was really quite bad in my opinion. To hear him on this one perform really well was actually a nice bit of fresh air. So yeah, there, there are great moments on this album, but I don't know if this is the type of album where you can just pick and choose random songs here and there though, because it feels like it's more of like this flowing album experience. I just think a few months down the line I'm not going to be thinking to myself, well I want to hear this Anderson Pack feature or this Tory Moore feature uh, because it just isn't that type of album, like these tracks work best in the context of the album. And in this specific context there's so much material I could do without, I don't really feel like I would ever want to return to this and listen to the whole thing from start to finish, honestly. Even if a lot of the instrumentals do have a nice tone to them, they set a nice mood throughout, it's just not really something that gets me all excited, you know? This might be a better album than I'm giving it credit for, honestly, but for me, I just really don't enjoy it that much. I think it's the worst album he's put out to date, to be honest, aside from that Star Wars compilation that he did, which I never listened to, but I heard that was terrible. But I'm talking more about the studio albums he's put out. 27 tracks that easily could have been condensed into like 15, to be honest. I think the features could have been utilized better at points. I think the production could have been way more interesting. I don't think this album is as bold and as extravagant as it wants to be. I'm going five out of 10 here. This was quite a disappointment. Unfortunately for me, I uh, was hoping for better, but I, it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts if you have something to say about this album, if you disagree, if you agree with me, if you whatever, just let me know. Your favorite tracks, that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments. Have a good day. Goodbye.